everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Mercy Mary, popularly known as the Nurse with the Difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we're going to be talking about blood transfusion. What is blood transfusion? What are the indications of blood transfusion? What is the nurse's responsibility before, during, and after blood transfusion? By the end of this class, you should be able to answer this question. But before we go into details, can you click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification button so you don't miss out? Let's go there. Come back, like I earlier said, we're going to be talking about blood transfusion. What is blood transfusion therapy? Blood transfusion therapy involves transfusing whole blood or blood components from a donor to a recipient. Transfusing whole blood or blood components from a donor to a recipient. Blood transfusion can be just um, the pack cell volume, that's the red cell parts, can be the platelet, can be the thrombocyte, or can be the whole blood. That's why they say whole blood. Can be the whole blood, which involves everything. You are transfusing everything to this patient. So it's either you are transfusing the whole blood or you are transfusing some components, some vital components of the blood at that particular moment. What you, are being, what you are going to transfuse depends on the patient's condition and what is lacking. At that particular point in time so blood transfusion involves transfusing whole blood or blood components from a donor to a recipient then that takes us to the indication of blood transfusion why would I want to give my patient blood what is happening I can't just wake up and start giving my patient blood there must be an indication for it so the first one is severe anemia we remember when we were talking about anemia, we said that anemia is a reduction in the red blood cell count or the hemoglobin count. So when there is severe anemia, one of the, one of the intervention is to give your blood, is to transfuse blood. So severe anemia is an indication for blood transfusion. Then the second is disease of the bone. Remember in our previous class, we said um, blood red blood cells the blood cells are being produced from where the bone marrow so when there's a disease of the bone the bone is unable the bone marrow is unable to produce enough blood cells so blood transfusion at that moment it's very important then the third is congenital hemolytic anemia congenital means from birth hemolytic the blood anemia so when a child is faced with this condition, he or she is required to be transfused immediately. Then the other one is leukemia. Leukemia is also known as the cancer of the blood. The first thing that is affected in leukemia is the white blood cells. So one of the indications for blood transfusion is what? Leukemia. A class on leukemia will be given. Then the other one is carbon monoxide poisoning carbon monoxide poisoning you want to know why carbon monoxide poisoning require blood transfusion i will explain carbon monoxide when it gets to the body it's definitely going to decrease the oxygen in the body the uh, the percentage of carbon monoxide will be increased and that of oxygen will be reduced so to ensure that there's an increased oxygen circulation the blood transfusion is carried out so there will be enough red blood cell to transfuse oxygen and also remove carbon dioxide. Then the other one is hemophilia. Hemophilia is a blood clotting disorder where the platelets are lacking. So when hemophilia takes place, there's excessive bleeding. When a child has a small cord, you see blood gushing out like there's excessive bleeding because there's problem with the clotting factor. So, when hemophilia occurs, is also an indication for what blood transfusion. Then, major operation. Yes, as a student nurse or as a nurse, you find out that during operations in the theater, the doctor always asks um, the patient's relative to ensure that there is a blood at the blood bank prepared for that patient. Because during major operations, there is a lot of blood loss and it has to be replaced to make the patient live happily ever after. 
Then the other is severe burns. Severe burn is also an indication for blood transfusion. During severe burn, there is dehydration. Burn causes severe dehydration and blood transfusion will go a long way to increase the fluid in the body. Then it takes us to the nurse's responsibility before blood transfusion. The nurse's responsibility before blood transfusion. What are you to do as a nurse before blood transfusion? The first is to explain procedure to your patient. You don't just meet your patient like that and start transfusing the blood. Rather, you explain the procedure. Madam Jones, Madam Mercy, I'll be giving you blood today because this happened because you're having severe anemia because you'll be undergoing a major operation because you just undergo a major operation this should be explained to the patient you don't just wake up and go and meet your patient and like start setting lines without explaining this particular procedure to the patient then the other thing your responsibility as a nurse is to ensure the patient empties his or her bowel and bladder madam are you sure you are not feeling pressed? Do you want to pass out feces? Ensure that this patient do that before the actual blood transfusion to avoid destruction. For example, the blood transfusion might be going and like, ah, I want to ease myself. Disturbing the whole processes. Process I get, you get. <laughs> then the order is ensure blood is properly screened and crossed match. This is very, very important ensure that the blood is properly screened and cross match most of the time the blood is being br um, brought down into the ward when it gets to the ward cross check the patient's name the blood group ensure you cross check not just with yourself alone but with another healthcare practitioner with another nurse with a doctor around make sure you cross check and see that the blood is properly screened and cross match then the other one is ensure that the correct temperature of blood is maintained and is collected 30 minutes before transfusion. Most times when you get the blood from the blood bank, it is usually very cold. You can't just set up that line and start transfusing that patient at that particular moment. So you ensure that the blood is at the right temperature. Most times you bring it 30 minutes before blood transfusion, put it in your normal tap water and inside put the blood there. I didn't, I didn't mean you should open it to put the blood bag inside the bowl with warm water, with normal water, tap water I mean. Then the other one is methane aseptic technique. Ensure that everything you are doing is sterile. Like Make sure everywhere is clean. You have to maintain what aseptic technique reassure the patient. As a nurse, it is your duty to reassure this patient. Sometimes, when a patient know he or she wants to like, he or she wants to get another person's blood, they get disturbed. They are anxious. Which person's blood am I getting? I've seen a lot of cases in a hospital setting where a patient will tell you, I'm not taking another person's blood. They'll tell you they are not. It's your duty as a nurse to reassure this patient that it's nothing bad. It's for their own good. For them to live happily ever after, they have to take this blood transfusion. You tell them the possibility or the complication of not doing that. You explain them, you reassure them to relieve their anxiety. Then also you screen and position the patient properly. Ensure that this patient's privacy is maintained. You don't just expose the patient and leave the patient like that. You have to screen and position this patient properly. Remember, your nurse's responsibility before blood transfusion is explain procedure to the patient, ensure patient empties his or her bowel and bladder, ensure blood is properly screened and cross-matched. Ensure that the correct temperature of blood is maintained and is collected 30 minutes before transfusion. Maintain aseptic technique. Reassure this patient. Screen and position the patient properly. Then that takes us to the nurse's responsibility during blood transfusion. What is a nurse's responsibility during blood transfusion? The first is regulate the flow rate as specified by the doctor is it 20 drops per minute is it one drop per minute or is it two drops per minute you have to regulate the flow rate as specified by the doctor then the second is 
observe the flow rate and sites frequently you have to observe the flow rate you have to check oh is this um, is this blood dropping at the exact flow rate is the site tissued is the site still in situ you have to observe that then the other one is observe vital signs every 15 minutes and record we all know that vital signs are basic data they are imports they are fundamental data that help to check the physiology of the body so you have to observe the vital signs every 15 minutes during blood transfusion then the other one is stop transfusion in case of any reaction if you notice any reaction stop the blood as soon as possible the reactions could be hypothermia could be hypothermia or there could be allergic reaction like rashes all over the skin so your duty as a nurse is to stop the infusion if there is any reaction then the other one is maintain intake and output record you have to record the intake of the patient how um, how many bags of blood or how many pints of blood have been given to this patient you have to monitor the output too since fluid is going into the body then the other is gently agitate the container when the red blood cells settle to the bottom as a student nurse or as a nurse you notice when they are giving whole blood they tell you to shake to agitate the blood to rock it so they will mix together because if you don't the red blood tend tend to settle and the plasma remains up so the patient is no longer getting the whole blood so you rock the blood so that everything goes inside then the other is the pack must not be allowed to run dry beyond the nozzle before clipping off the pack should not be allowed to run dry that bag that pack of blood it should not be allowed to run dry so when you see it's getting to the nozzle you clip off you clip off to avoid air going into the body then that takes us to the nurse's responsibility after blood transfusion it's your nurse's responsibility after blood transfusion the first is discontinue the transfusion you will leave it there now so after blood transfusion you have to discontinue that infusion then the second is reassure the patient and make him comfortable reassure this patient try relieving their anxiety because this patient at a particular moment might be anxious so you reassure them and tell them it's for their own good and it's explain the benefits of blood transfusion to them then the second is check the vital signs as i earlier said vital signs are for the meta data so you have to check this patient's vital signs then the order is remove screen and transfusion equipment another responsibility is to observe for any reaction and report immediately you have to observe the patient it is your duty as a nurse to observe this patient thoroughly then if there is any reaction kindly report as soon as possible then the other is encourage patient to verbalize fear and complain as a nurse your patient should be free with you so you have to encourage them to let to share your their problems to share their fears to share what they feel is wrong to complain to you so you encourage them to do that then keep the bottle of blood for at least 24 hours before discarding after you discontinue the blood the blood um, the blood bag after blood transfusion you don't have to discard the pack immediately you have to keep for at least 24 hours you have to keep for what for at least 24 hours before discarding because you don't know the kind of reaction that are likely to pop up then that takes us to the complications that may arise beef during and after blood transfusion the first is hemolysis that is breakdown of red blood cells we've discussed that then allergy allergy such as inch you see the patients scratching the body then we have pyrexia that's fever we have circulatory overload we have pulmonary edema we have infection we have heart failure we have shock and we have cardiac arrest thank you very much for staying tuned and don't forget to click the subscribe button turn on the notification button so you don't miss out do have a wonderful day ahead thank you very much